Hey there, folks. It's Zach. Feel free to argue. And uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about somebody I saw on uh, Democracy Now! Uh, on Wednesday. Um, it's a guy going by the name of Matthew Alexander. Um, that's not his real name. Um, and uh, considering that he was an interrogator in Iraq, you can see why he might not necessarily want to use his real name. Um, there have certainly been threats of repercussions since he was one of the people who helped to bring down Zarqawi. Um, he was fascinating. He just wrote a book, uh, basically, on his experiences. And uh, he had some very, very important things to say about torture. I mean, and, and we're talking since, I mean, he's an actual interrogator. We're talking about somebody who knows what he's talking about. And a couple of things that he really wants to, to put across. First, his experience was that um, torture absolutely does not work. Um, he knew people who tried torture. He employed different techniques. Their techniques did not work. His techniques did. So it's reinforcing what I've said numerous times on this channel, and that is that, that torture as a technique for getting actionable information in a timely manner absolutely does not work. Um, and he confirms this straight down the line. And uh, the other thing is, is that he wants to get across this whole idea, and this is the reason why he wrote his book, um, which I will, um, well, I, don't, I can't post a link, but I can, I can tell you what it is in the sidebar. I just don't re remember the exact title of it. I want to make sure I get it right. So check the sidebar if you're interested in the book. Um, but it all has to do with uh, his premise, based on his interviews with many, many people who, um, you know, either were planning to cause harm to the United States or actually had caused harm to the United States, were associating with people who were planning harm to the United States. You know, and he's done literally hundreds of these kinds of interviews at this point, um, or interrogations, whatever you want to prefer to call them. Um, and he wants to get across the idea that the people who are coming to Iraq from outside the country to fight against U.S. forces are coming there specifically because of the fact that we are not living up to our ideals, because we are engaging in torture. And he wants people to make this connection in a very clear way so that we stop the torture regime and, s and, and stop engaging in this behavior. I want to read a, a quotation from him now, which I think really helps to, to you know, illustrate this. Yeah, you know, torture. It's so narrowly or broadly defined depending on who you're talking to these days. I would say torture to me is just unethical behavior. And you can do things that are legal within the rules that are unethical. And so I just know me, by my gut feeling, based on the principles that I was raised on, you know, that my parents gave to me, that there's things I'll never do. Because I know it feels wrong, and it is wrong. And so, you know, others felt comfortable either pushing all the way up to the limits and doing things that were unethical but were legal or breaking the rules. I felt that was not something I was going to do and I wasn't going to allow my team to do. I think what's more important at this point is we know that torture has cost us American lives. We know that it's ineffective and we know that it's wrong and it's damaged our image. I think, you know, for me, as a military officer, my job isn't to identify broken wheels, it's to fix them. And so the approach that I took, and that I talk about in the book, is how do we move forward? You know, we're given this choice of either terrorist attacks or torture, but maybe there's a third way. Maybe there's a better way to do interrogations that has nothing to do with torture. And in the book, I describe the process of coming up with these new ways, and how my team, together, were able to come up with the new methods. So there you go. Um, here you have somebody who really knows what they're talking about, who has, you know, is trying to produce results, who has specific objectives that he's trying to achieve. So he's not interested in any kind of bullshit rationalizations for why we're doing it. It either works or it doesn't. And honestly, you know, he's like a lot of people if, that, I, that I listen to on this subject who, who honestly feel that, you know, if torture was go going to solve the problem, that philosophically they could handle doing it. And he's different. 
um, he, he really thinks that there's an individually defined sense of right and wrong. But, I mean, a lot of people I know say, I'm willing to, to accept whatever rubric gets the job done. But I think straight down the line, the people who practically are involved in trying to achieve results with these techniques know that torture doesn't work. They know that it doesn't achieve the kind of results that we want to achieve. And so all of the rationalizations that are given, all the justifications for, for engaging in torture are just that. They're rationalizations. They don't hold water. They're not, they're not reasonable arguments as to why we can engage in this activity. You know, the, the damage that it does aside, which I mean, I think, you know, I think it has inherently, it's inherently wrong. So I, I'm, I'm more of an absolutist. I, I don't believe that there's any kind of situation that actually justifies torture. But I was saying that even if you buy into the fact, it, buy into the idea that there are, are situations that, that um, torture is acceptable in, what he's saying here is that you can't achieve your, your ends with torture. You can't do it. It just doesn't work for that. So... Once again, I think this is something that people need to think about when they're, they're thinking about um, torture and whether or not um, it's something that the, the country should be engaging in. Because he shows how the techniques that he used, which are, are very much like you know, the kind of uh, techniques that we use in civilian law enforcement over here in this country, um, you know, things that are based on developing trust and uh, you know, commonality, um, with people and uh, getting them to, you know, honestly betray, betray the people who they're associated with by convincing them that what they're doing is wrong or that you at least understand their situation enough that they feel like, you know, you can build common ground and you can, you can get information out of them. And, uh, you know, this sounds like, you know, happy liberal horseshit until you talk to these really practical people who are only concerned with results, and they say, you know what? This is what works. So, I think people who favor torture need to look at their own motives for, for wanting torture. Because if it's not for actually getting information that's actionable so that we can save lives and prevent terrorist uh, incidents, then what exactly do you support torture for? Because I think the only things left is punitive. And honestly, that, that's a really terrible reason to cling to something. That you just want to punish people and you want to cause harm. Especially considering, you know, how random our application of the use of torture has been thus far. But, as always, you can feel free to argue with me. Uh, this is Zach Elliott. Have a good day, y'all.